How do we create speed? There's two key parts and we're gonna talk about it in this video, so check it out. Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson. In today's video, we are part three of our Rotational Shot Put 101 series. And one of the things we've been looking at is kind of introducing you to the throw, understanding you have to have a structure. The first video, we started to look at the entry side. Now we're gonna look at that thing everybody wants. You wanna have that speed. How do you create speed into the middle? And one of the key things is if you messed up that entry, you're, you're gonna be toast. You're gonna fall into the throw and you can't create speed when you're falling off balance. So you have to come into that throw on balance. So we're comparing our throwers one through four member thrower number one 10 year old first day throwing so the movement is very good for the first day and as this athlete continues to go on and apply the six pillars he should continue to have more and more success when we look at again and we compare and we kind of review and we're staying nice and long and we're getting that foot now right here is the drop-in so let's just focus on thrower number one you're gonna see what we call is our pillar three is we have to drop into the throw so sometimes there's a drop right we don't want to drop we don't want to turn in place we want to drive into the ring so we're rotating and turning and dropping in and if you don't drop into the throw you're gonna fall right and that's what we don't want to have we, we're gonna fall in the throw too in the rotational throws if you don't have the axis set up on the entry and drop it into the throw the hip falls to the side you're basically trying to turn and you're falling into the throw and that is gonna put you off balance and it's then you're gonna be decelerating you can't increase your speed so if you apply speed even when you're falling could you kind of potentially salvage that right but it's a salvage it's not an optimization of your technical positions therefore you're going to be losing distance so when we look at thrower number one and we see him he's dropping here you're gonna see that nice little turn right there you see that knee kind of hinge and now he's just past nine and he's pushing that knee in so he's moving everything into the direction of the throw you're seeing this right now the thing that this thrower is gonna be learning in is back in our entry we didn't talk a whole lot about the sweep leg we just talked about kind of the position of where it comes up but we are going to be learning how to keep this leg active and open and we keep those knees at and so right here is where you set in and you kind of create that wide sweep so again this athlete's been throwing for literally a matter of hours you got a pretty nice position he's not entirely sure how to use that left side yet so you notice his left arm's a little bent a little early but he's got a pretty good sweep it goes a little narrow but again for day one right this is really really good movement and you're going to notice right here that that foot keeps moving and so he's not quite over rotating he's pushing and his hips are moving which is real good so what we're going to be doing is coming into pillar three we drop in we're creating speed now what are we going to do we don't want to just keep blowing past the middle we've got to get this guy he's got to wrap in his arm so that's where you see kind of this arm come in here and you want to see that you see the right side and the left side kind of come together so that you can accelerate rotation and then you're going to come open long again you're going to see how this arm comes out. We've always talked about creating that long path and position and that's going to be key so as the thrower comes through he can keep turning but he's again coming off of being a glider so he's used to kind of pushing instead of rotating all the way through and getting that side so he can push behind it. So now if you just kind of back it up a little bit and we're going to kind of connect how that dropping in and applying speed in the rewrap affects that length through the finish right you see that. Again when we look here what's going to be the key is do we push the knee we have to be driving in and this is where we talk about that if the upper body opens too much you're creating rotational speed you're going to be just rotating in place and you're not going to be driving in so it's a combination of creating an angular rotational linear position right and that's why this is tricky because you have to learn how all that puts together and so when we look at thrower number four you're going to see how he's going to come around you're going to see how the lower body is really moving this way he's got a nice left foot he's got a nice sweep leg path is starting to be established and you're going to see how that leg kind of comes up and then he's out here nice and wide and you're going to see how he kind of opens this around now if you looked at best male throwers in the world you've looked at joe kovacs tom walsh ryan krauser darlin romani when you look at those four guys each of them are doing essentially the same sort of mechanics there's some key nuances differences walsh and krauser and kovacs and romani they're all going to stop that arm and they're going to do what we're showing you here in this pillar four position so when you watch this and you drop in you see like this this thrower number four you're going to see how he creates that re 
rewrap right there. And so what we're looking for with the rewrap is we want to create this nice vertical axis. And the closer this shoulder can be to this line, the more torqued up the upper body. Now, when I say that, we're never trying to keep the upper body or the shot back. We've always taught rotate the right side around into the left side. And so we're creating this line between the two sides. And that's the key. We're not trying to hold the shot back. We're trying to accelerate. So we're bringing the left side and the right side together to create faster acceleration. So when we look here, like this is again our thrower in week one, thrower number two, you notice he does he does a pretty good job of creating his rewrap, right? He's got everything out and that's gonna allow him to come over here. And then he kind of pulls that shoulder around a little because he's been used to being a glider, but a pretty nice position. And then you're gonna notice thrower number three, same thing right here. You can see when we put him in position and we go right here, you're gonna notice that his shoulder is actually kind of the furthest away, right? We wanna be more in this position. So by the time we're there, so when we get it and we get that left arm here, you're gonna see how it's opening just a touch. So this is gonna be uh, factors that are related to what are we doing? We're dropping in and how are we attacking the throw? So thrower number three, he's got his chest open a little too much to the throw. And so therefore it's going to pull him into the throw and it's going to create a little bit of shift to come through. So here's the thing that we're going to focus on. We are trying to teach how do we move the sweep leg in our pillar three and how do we have? So if we have everything lengthened, we're going to feel the long path. The left arm goes short, the sweep leg tends to go short. So let's look at thrower number two real quick. And so you're going to see he's got a pretty good long path and then the upper body starts to follow the arm a little too much whereas if you look at throwers two three and four together right watch watch um, when we go back and we look at three so see how we're all basically at this point here and now watch two his upper body starts to lead whereas you notice three and four are continuing the long path and they're not allowing the shoulders to turn they're turning the arm and this is a really important cue for you guys so as you do that now how are we going to do that and how are we going to break that down this is where again inside the throwing chain reaction we go through this in detail and we really break down specific drills and we start putting it together in pieces and we put it back together in what we call pillar connection and then we apply it to our throwing and we're always being able to find the individual areas that need the most attention your throw is going to be the result of your weakest link and so if you can get all of your links in your chain nice and strong your throw is going to become really good and then you're going to be working on elite level stuff before you know it. So again, pillar three, we're going to feel that push. We want to stay, we're going to be driving off of this leg, keeping this leg on a wide rotational path and having this leg, this left arm and the, and the sweep leg kind of countering. Then they're going to kind of wrap together. We're going to be closing things up to create speed. That's what we, especially in the shot, the discus, it's a different animal. We have to stay long and counter the implement. And then we're going to be moving into our power position. But this is the key. When we can be fast, we got the right path here and we push. And then as everything closes up, it increases acceleration and balances better. And that's how you're going to set up a really sweet power position and feel that real comfortable position of just smacking the crap out of the shot. It's going to feel really, really good. And that's the goal. So remember, go back and look at the previous videos. If you didn't see it, especially video number two, where we talk about the entry. And now we're talking about our pillar three, four, and then there's very specific drills and ways to identify what you need to do in each pillar. That's what the throwing chain reaction system is all about. So hopefully that helped you guys today. Be sure to follow, like our page, be sure to subscribe, hit that thumbs up, give us a comment below. We will see you guys on the next video.